Bro! I didn't know we were gonna go way up here, guys. Didn't I tell you I was afraid of heights? Uh, okay. I'll calm down just a little bit. Count to ten, help! Ooh. Wow! You guys, make sure you go slow now, cause I told you this height thing kind of scares me. Get over my friend chair blade. I don't think that's the best time to do it. Well, if you guys want to see this creativity? Like I can say I'll go with you all. Well, you tell me what creativity is. Okay. Yeah. Creativity is imagine what you can do because you're made in God's image. And we've seen so many things that are creative, but it only makes us want to be able to do what? Yeah. Know more about God. Because He is the creator. These mountains are magnificent. Did you know that God shaped the mountains? Well, I won't get into all that. What's our memory verse for this month? Can anybody remember? I think you can. I think it caps to blow off up here. So we can't put those on. I just tell you, Lord, you're great. You are really worthy of praise. No one can completely understand how great you are. Psalms 145, verse 3. That's right. We only get to see a piece of who God is. But he's made us to be created the way we should be created. How? Well, many ways. This past week, the week before that, the week before that, you all had opportunities to be creative and to be able to show like what? Yeah. Show people who God really is. Through many ways. Love. Compassion. Listening. All those things. Yeah. Now, Many of you guys are, you know, going to school virtually. But I'm going to go ahead and say it. You guys are not going to get internet access way up here. So we've got to go ahead and finish this lesson to get you all back to the earth. So you guys can be able to have some internet access. I wouldn't mind staying up here for a while. What about you guys? Goodbye. When we know God made us in his image, he made us to be just like him. So we can use creativity that he gave us to make a difference in the world around us. I, I've got somewhat of a game to play with you all. Ah, yeah. We got to still focus on what we're doing. So you all just tell me, okay? We can't afford to be putting one hand up and one hand down. We've got to stay and keep flying, okay? Everybody okay? So you got to talk loud now. You ready? Okay. So, have you ever heard of this stuff called salt? What about sugar? What are we doing? Yeah. We do 
the same thing in both of them. Stupid and not foods. But they give a really, really different taste. Have you ever tasted something that should have had sugar in it and it actually had salt? Yeah. Have you ever tasted something that should have sugar in it and it had salt and it tasted good? <laughs> no. Never. Whatever. Whatever's supposed to have sugar in it, you want to have sugar in it and you don't want to have salt in it. Whatever's supposed to have salt in it, you don't want to have sugar in it. Can't easy. It. Well, let's see how good you guys are. There's a lot of foods that have sugar and salt in it, but it takes the perfect amount to do so. So for this game, I want you all to yell salt or sugar. Remember, I don't want you to put your hands up. We got to stay the course. Yeah, salt or sugar. Okay? You ready? Here comes slide one. Okay. Pretty good. Let's try slide two. You ready? Go. Slide four. Got uh, if you want No, not at all. Let's try this one. about this hey guys keep your eyes on the door just scream loud saw the shoot try this one Great job, you all. Guys and girls, you did a fantastic job. That was kind of fun, wasn't it? Whoever knew that baking could be so creative? Yeah, I like to cook myself. Can't get them mixed up. But salt and sugar, yeah. They could look exactly alike. So very easy, you can put salt in the recipe, it should have sugar. That's why it's so important to be able to know the difference. So this week, Jesus actually tells a story. And Jesus is one of the greatest storytellers of all time. He tells, at times, what? Earthly stories with a heavenly meaning. And what is that called? Yeah, that's right. A parable. But this one is not really a parable. He's actually using a metaphor. Being able to say one thing, but he's actually meaning about something else. So, if y'all got time, tell you about it. About 2,000 years ago, a little bit more on that time, Jesus lived on earth and there were always crowds and crowds of people that followed him. Because they always wanted to see Jesus be healed and hear his teaching. Well, one day, the crowd was gathered around when they were on the mountainside. 
very similar to this one. I don't know if he's just Steve. But man, very well may be. And he taught his disciples. And listen, let me tell you what he said. Open up your Bibles to Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. And it reads this way. You are the salt of the earth. But suppose the salt loses the saltiness. How can it be made salty again? It's no longer for good for anything. It will be thrown out and people will walk all over. That's pretty interesting. Jesus said that people are like salt. Hmm. Let's see if we can understand what it means. Hey, have y'all ever had like some of the pictures, like French fries? You ever been to McDonald's or Burger King or wherever and got the French fries? And maybe your parents said, there's no salt on it. And they made their funny looking face. What about some vinegar and soft potato chips? They have to have the vinegar on there, but they also have to have the salt to it. What about just regular potato chips? What about pretzels? Pretzels taste kind of funny when they don't have the salt on it. And what about popcorn? Yeah, you can have butter on there. But the salt, it makes a huge difference. So you see, those things, when they don't have salt on them, they don't do what? They don't taste as good. Now, here's the thing. You don't throw out the popcorn. You don't throw out the french fries. You don't throw out the pretzels nor the potato chips. But if you were putting salt on them and the salt didn't taste salty, yeah, you would throw the salt out. Wouldn't be any need to what? Wouldn't be need to put it on there. That's what the reason you put it on there. It's for the salt and this flavor. But that's not exactly all that Jesus meant. Salt makes things taste better. In fact, back in Jesus' day, salt was one of the main things that was used to not only preserve food, but also to make it taste better. The point it was trying to make was this. We can make other people's lives better. Like salt makes food taste better. You say, where the salt of the earth? We should be like salt in people's life. No, not like salt in their eyes. It hurts. We should be able to make their lives better. Yeah, and it makes sense. Jesus was saying that we could show others how good God is with our actions, the way we live. We can be salty. We can treat others the way we want to be treated. And we need to be careful that we don't lose our saltiness. Because once we lose it, how do we get it back? So we got to be very careful. Well, now that doesn't make a little more sense. Well, that wasn't all Jesus told his friends that day. It's more. Still stay in Matthew chapter 5. We'll look at verse 14 and 15. He says this. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Also, people do not light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand. Then it gives light to 
Everyone in the house. All right. Jesus said that we're not just salt, but we're also light. What do you mean, light? What can you do in the dark? But go to sleep. Have you ever read a book in the dark? Uh, you can strain your eyes, but when you turn on the flashlight on your phone, it makes it much easier to do what? Read the words. What if you gotta get up and go to the bathroom at night time? Yeah, in your own house you know you're way around. But what if you were having a sleepover? Look what you can run into. Well, what if you were playing hide and go seek at night time? It's already hard enough when somebody's hidden from you. But when it's dark at night time, it almost makes it impossible to see. So light's very important. Light does what? It allows us to be able to see in dark places. A lot of times, dark places are not just in our room. Dark places are not just in our closet. Dark places are not just in our backyard. At times, we have dark places in our life. When our friends pick on us, it feels dark. Nobody's in. We make it a bad grade, and we study real hard for it. It's a dark place. Or maybe when we lost a grandparent, or uncle, or any family member. It's a real dark place. That's why God needs us to do what? Light. And we can do what? That's so true. Treat us the way you want to be treated. When you're in a dark place, you want somebody to cheer you up. You want somebody to let you know what? It'll be okay. You may even just want somebody to talk to. You may even want just a hug. You may want somebody to take you outside just to get some sunshine and play a video game. Inside, whatever. All those are ways to do what? Let your light shine. And as we do that, guess what we got to do? We got to share God's story with them. This is why we're able to do it. We can't act like, oh, I'm just this or I'm just that. We got to point them to Jesus Christ and let them know. He's the reason why we have our life. He gave us our life. And we let it shine. So you remember, we're not just salt, we're light as well. See, we're the light of the world. We can shine our light by doing good things for people around us. What happens? When we let our light shine so others can see, people see the good things we do. And that will help people understand what God is really like. When we use our creativity to help others, we share God's story and show what God is doing in our own lives. Be salt and light. You don't have to pick one or the other. Jesus asks us to be both. 
God's story is good news for everyone. Yeah, the, the bullet that you pick that picks on you. The girl that says that you don't have the right color clothes on. Or you don't sing in the right tune. Everyone. And with God's help, we can share with others. And how do we do that? We can tell people about God. We can share all that he's done for us. And we can tell them how much God loves them. But we can also show them. And what does that mean? That's what it means to be what? That's right. Salt and light. And we're the kind of people we're showing them what God's like. When we're patient with people, when we show them what God that God is patient, and when we love people, we show people that God loves them more than they could ever imagine. God created you to share your story. It ain't, it ain't just about the words you say. God made you in his image. That means you can use your creativity, each one of you all, to share his story in all kinds of ways. And you remember, each one of you all are made in God's image. But each one of you all have all different stories to tell all different people. Nobody's story will sound the same. You can share a story through art, through music, song, dance, or even just being a friend. Whatever gift or talent God has given you, you can use it to share His story with us. Remember, just like salt makes food taste better, we can make people's lives better. We can shine light in people's lives. We show God's love. And we treat others with love and kindness. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm just saying that's what He's given us the power to do. So it is easy. We can use our creativity to point all over God. We can show people what a difference He has made in our own life with the way we live our life every single day. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for creating us your image. It's so cool how you crave us to be like salt and light as we share your story with us. Please help us to treat people with love and kindness every single day. We want our lives to show all that you've done for us. We love you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Thank you.